Hey, how's it going, people? Brown Brady here, and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'll be introducing you and giving you my first impressions of my new to me 2018 Triumph Street Triple R. The 2018 Triumph Street Triple came in three different models. The S, which is the base model, the RS, which is the top model, and the R, which is what I have today, which is in between those two. And from what I've read so far, the R is almost the same in terms of performance as the previous generation's RS. This is also the low ride height or LRH version, which means it has a lower seating position. It also has specific suspension and seating configuration. Not that you can't ride taller bikes, which I have in the past. It's just that I feel more comfortable having my seat a little bit lower to the ground. I'm not a very tall person, so this seat height of 780 millimeters or almost 31 inches inspires a little more confidence in me. Now for the rest of the dimensions, the handlebars are 29 inches, its overall height without the mirrors is 43 inches, a 56 inch wheelbase, a 24.9 inch rake, and a 3.9 inch trail. Its dry weight is 166 kilos or about 366 pounds, and the tank capacity is 4.6 gallons or 17.4 liters. One of the few interesting things about this bike are these headlights. In this generation, they have an insect-like appearance, and to me they remind me of a praying mantis. Just as I thought, and where do these scaly savages run off to? It can be polarizing, but I really like it, and I like it a lot better than the tiny point of light that was on my MT-07 anyway. Now the headlights on my Street Triple right now only light up on one side, and I think that's because one of them is busted. So I'll create a separate video on how to replace those headlights. And hopefully both of them will come on when I turn on the engine. I really like the look of aggressiveness on this bike, especially the gull wing swing arm and the exhaust pipe. And these body kits just make it more complete. It gives it a more polished athletic stance. It has a Showa 41mm upside down, separate function, big piston forks for the front suspension with a 95mm front wheel travel. It is adjustable for compression damping, rebound damping, and preload. And in the rear, it has a Showa piggyback reservoir mono shock with a 98mm wheel travel. It is also adjustable for step preload and compression damping. These give the bike a soft and comfortable ride while having excellent handling around corners. It has cast aluminum 17 inch alloy wheels fitted with 120 70 R17 at the front and 180 55 R17 in the rear. For braking, in front, it has twin 310 millimeter floating discs fitted with Brembo M4 four piston radial monoblock calipers. And in the rear, it has a single 220 millimeter fixed disc fitted with a Brembo single piston sliding caliper. Both front and back are switchable ABS. Thanks to its aluminum beam, twin spar front frame, and twin sided cast aluminum alloy swing arm, this bike is lighter than the previous generation, which was noticeable when I rode it. And as a point of reference, my one cylinder Honda CBR 250RA had a dry weight of 364 pounds. This bike is only two pounds more. And right out front is probably the best looking instrument panel I've ever seen on a motorcycle. It's a 5 inch full color TFT screen with different readouts including speedometer, rev counter, riding mode, gear position, fuel gauge, odometer, trip meter, 
and journey distance using the buttons on the left handlebar. This R model also has displays for fuel consumption, rage to empty, service information, coolant temperature, and warnings. There are up to six different styles to choose from which have different layouts and are preset to different riding modes. And I think one has a lap timer which is exclusive to the RS model. This bike comes with a ride-by-wire throttle, which with that, the throttle response can be programmed for traction control in different riding modes. The riding modes allow the rider to select the ABS throttle response and traction control settings even while on the move. This bike comes with four riding modes. Sport and track modes put the rev counter in gear position as its main focus, while road and rain focus more on the speedometer. Overall, this screen has a high enough resolution to provide crispy graphics and bright enough even in full sunlight. It also has an ambient light sensor which allows it to automatically select the best contrast setting. At the heart of this lovely bike is this engine. It's a new liquid-cooled 12-valve dual overhead cam 765cc Daytona engine which has 16% more power and torque than the previous generation. It puts out 116 horsepower and 77 newton meters of torque. It has a clean fuel consumption of up to 49 miles per gallon. It has made it to a six-speed gearbox and a wet multi-plate slip assisted clutch with shorter gear ratios for the first and second gear for improved acceleration. Combined with having one of the lightest frames in its class, it makes a street triple very agile. One of the unique features about this bike for me is that it has a three cylinder engine, which means the exhaust manifold has three headers that converge into one collector pipe. I've never owned a bike with more than two cylinders, so this was another first for me. And the odd number cylinder count allows it to produce a sweet exhaust sound. I don't know how else to describe it, but this exhaust sound is so buttery smooth to my ears. So how does it ride? Like a dream. At speed it feels light and nimble. It has plenty of get up when accelerating from a standstill thanks to the short gear ratios down low. On the streets I think it's a perfect everyday commuter. For a small person like me, the ride position in terms of ergonomics is very comfortable. The controls are easy to manipulate and the instrument cluster is large enough and easy to read. On the highway, there's always plenty of power when you need to overtake. The suspension is soft and plush, but it can take corners with ease. It can stop at a dime with confidence thanks to its giant Brembo ABS brakes both front and back. And finally, I can't get over the exhaust sound. It's so awesome to listen to, I won't grow tired of it. With that said, I do have a few complaints about this bike. First of all, I think that the rear seat is a little too far forward because when I'm leaning forward behind the non-existent windscreen, my butt is hitting the rear seat. So for somebody taller than me, I can only imagine how much more uncomfortable it would be. I also find the seat to be a little on the firm side, so I wouldn't take this on a very long trip without cushy pants anyway. There is also no windshield, but I suppose I could just buy an aftermarket windshield and I can add that on afterwards. And finally, I know I complimented the big bright instrument panel, but at night I do find it a little bit too bright. I guess I'm just not used to the bright screen just yet. Would I recommend this as your first bike as a beginner? Uh, no, definitely not. Not unless you had the temperament of Eeyore. Okay, I'll learn to live without it. Even with the advanced technology like ABS, riding modes, this has enough power to get a beginner into a lot of trouble. But that is just my opinion. If you already own this bike, let me know in the comments section what you think. Well, there you have it, folks, an introduction and a brief review of my 2018 Triumph Street Triple R. If you like this video, please hit that like button, or better yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, ride safe.
and thanks for watching. You look like a bobblehead.